Overclockers are a different breed of people. Hi, I'm Elric Ferris. Welcome once again back to the motherboards.org YouTube channel. Today we're going to take a look at something for that specific crowd, the overclocker. Today we're going to look at the X58A OC board from our friends over at Gigabyte. Now, this board is specified strictly for people using basically an open board test bench. This isn't really geared for the gamer. This isn't really geared for the enthusiast. This is geared towards the overclocker. People out there like Fugger and those type of guys who use the extreme stuff to cool their motherboards, they're going to like something like this because this board is geared totally for that environment. There are not very many, many ports on the rear I.O. at all. A lot of people, when we showed our prom video of this, you guys were like, wow, that board sucks. Well, this board's not geared for you. It's not geared for those who want a lot of ports. If you want 10 ports on your rear I.O., then this isn't the board for you. But if you're a guy out there and you're doing overclocking and you've got overclocking as part of your business, this is a board you want to be taking a very serious look at. So today we're going to break in and we're going to take a look at the unboxing. So let's open this thing up with the X58A-OC from Gigabyte. Gonna pop the cap here. Pull everything out. Now this is still based on the X58 chipset. A lot of you guys are gonna say, oh, why is it not based on the new chipset? It's old, well, it's not really. X58 is for the high-end person. All of the extreme CPUs are X58. Pop this open. Take a look at the motherboard. Now, there are three things here. I'm just gonna set this down for you guys to take a look at it. There are three things here that they say this board is really good at. It has the OC Dual BIOS, the OC VRM, and then the OC PEG, which actually provides additional cable power to all of your SATA and PCI connections. So here we have the board. You can see we have lots of slots for the memory right here. Two, four, six, triple channel memory. Gonna be very good stuff here. Everything is completely cooled off on the board. Even touching the board right now, all of the stuff on here is actually very cold to the touch. You have both SLI and Crossfire on here. You can see from the slots across here, you have one, two, three, four of the 16X slots. We have your 24 pin power cable right here. And one of the main features on this board I wanted to show you guys is, is right here on the board. Remember how I said this board is geared for the overclocker. As you can see, complete control is right here on the motherboard itself. Very, very important. There's also a little dip right here, a little switch right here, not a switch actually, but the little meters right here. These meters change numbers and they tell you there's actually any problems at all with the motherboard. So you can see right here around the ZIF socket, we got plenty of room on this for you to do all of your aftermarket cooling and stuff. Most people who are using this board are probably gonna be using either liquid or nitrogen. At the minimum, you're gonna see a water cooling system, but probably you're gonna see extreme users using much more than that. On the back right here, we have all of our slots. This board actually does have a couple of the SATA 3 slots on here. Other boards don't. This is another feature that's on this board. Growing across here, you have three of your standard SATA 2 ports. Flip it around. Take a look at the rear I.O. Like I said, this rear I.O. is not a fleshed out rear I.O. Why? Once again, I just want to point this out extremely. This is for the overclocker. If you're not an overclocker, this isn't your board. So please, on your comments, don't say that board sucks because it doesn't have a beer, big rear I.O. This board has a very small rear I.O. because the less taxing that we have in the rear I.O., the more flexibility we're actually going to have on the motherboard for overclocking. And since that board is for that, the rear I.O. is very limited because the rear I.O. conflicts with a lot of things with your overclocking. So that said, flip around to show you one more angle of the board. Going to flip it around the back. Now, there are some other stuff that come inside the box. I'll show you that stuff right now. I'm gonna go ahead and just pull it on out of the box here and show you a little piece by piece. There's quite a bit of stuff in here. So, we're gonna start off. We have two SATA cables. You can put those right out here. We can see them. I guess, let's see here. Just put them down so you guys can see them. I'll just choose an area. That way the cameraman can focus on in there. I'll choose right here. Nice place, plenty of room. Then we've got the three-way SLI bridge. There's not a cable for that. It's always a bridge, a nice solid piece of equipment. Then we have a bunch of little connectors here. These actually connect into things on your motherboard to show the specs. Then we have the Crossfire cable. Then we have the dual SLI cable. We have the rear I.O. You can see everything that features right there. We have a Dolby sticker for the onboard sound. 
the Gigabyte sticker. I mean, this board doesn't totally suck as far as features go. It does have good sound and stuff like that. You know, it's just made for the, for the guys in the overclocker. So I'll try to push this aside over here. Here we have the manual. There's going to be all kinds of things in there because the BIOS is going to be very flexible on this board. Then we have the multi-language user's guide. And last but not least, we have the driver's CD. So I don't know if we can get all of this in the camera, but basically this is everything that comes in the box of the new Gigabyte X58A-OC motherboard. Thanks for watching. Look for the full review here on motherboards.org as we go through our overclocking tests with both air, water, and nitrogen. Thanks for watching.